Good morning. Good morning, community of Douglas, and welcome to the City of Douglas uh, podcast and co-hosted by KDAP Talk of the Town this morning. My name is Ana Urquijo, and I'm the city manager, and I'm here today with um, Jason Bacon of KDAP and our very special guest today, Mayor Donald Hewish. So I'd like to welcome you. Uh, we have a, a special um, program for you today, the first of hopefully many to come. So um, we're going to hear from uh, Jason, who's co-hosting this with me today, uh, as far as bringing back Talk of the Town, which was such a great program uh, from years past in our community, which was a radio show. And he's going to share with us, you know, how that's going to come about and how long it's been since uh, that's been in the community. So welcome, uh, Jason, and thank you for joining us today. Oh, it's a pleasure to be here. Okay, KDAP's Talk of the Town has been not as active since Howard departed. Since Howard's passing, yes. Yeah, so it's probably uh, November 2015. Okay. Uh, seven years? Yeah, that's about seven years. Yes. All right, and um, it's a great opportunity to have this bring it back, vitalize the community again, and then tell our citizens and listeners what's happening in town. What's happening in town, yeah. So, um, great loss to our community, um, the loss of what we refer to as the Voice of Douglas many years ago and our wonderful Talk of the Town program. So, we're hoping to partner with KDAP uh, at least on a monthly basis, but also encourage other uh, key members of the community or organizations and agencies uh, to partner in with KDAP to bring back programs on Talk of the Town similar to ours. So what we're doing today is it's a co-host because we're doing a radio um, session along with a podcast. So we will be airing this also on YouTube and later on some other uh, platforms. Uh, so as we get started, we really want to let you know what's going on uh, with the city of Douglas and in your community. And our very special guest this morning, Mayor Hewish, uh, is going to kind of start us off and let us know um, what he'd like to um, share with the community to, to initiate the conversation. So, Mayor. Thank you, Anna and Jason. And, and can't express our gratitude enough to KDHP for their willingness to be able to do this. For us, it's it's difficult more and more as as we try to get information out to the community that the means of doing that, uh, especially through the newsprint, is is no longer that available to us. Uh, they do do a great job of putting out a newspaper and covering some Douglas issues uh, weekly, but this will give us a chance to be able to go a little bit more in depth, and you can hear and. And at one point in time, we hope to be able to field your questions and be able to answer those type of things to uh, be able to make this a more meaningful uh, part of our communication to the community. But first of all, you know, it's a great holiday season. I'd like to wish everyone on behalf of uh, the mayor and council and all the staff here at the city of Douglas a very Merry Christmas and a happy holidays and a safe holidays that uh, we hope that you will be able to participate in this year. But as far as some of the things that are that are going on in the city, lots of exciting things are happening. It's uh, interesting that we all tend to slow down as soon as Thanksgiving hits. We, we want to slow down and get, just get to the new year and then be refreshed and keep going. But that's not the case this year. <laughs> We're working on many things to be able to, to make things happen. And December is being a very, very busy month that as you may know already, we are in the process of purchasing the old Food City building. Uh, we've done, we've hired a, uh, a crew that went through and reviewed the building from head to toe to let us know what type of improvements were needed there at that building. It's, it's good news and there's some other news in there that's going to cost a couple of dollars, but in the end, we have every confidence that we'll be able to attract a new grocery store to be into town, which will provide employment and also the more convenience for people living on the east side of town. That's the first step. We, we anticipate that uh, happening shortly after the first of the year, be able to, to make that happen. And we're excited about that. Um, 
as you know, we were able to negotiate a purchase price that was much less than half of what the original asking price was. And, and uh, myself, along with many of the council members, we don't like being landlords, but this is a means of economic stimulation. And so I think that's why it's important that, that we get involved in that. We also are approved a bid for the purchase of the airport property minus the airport. And I know that sounds funny, but it's essentially for the property surrounding the airport that we feel that will open it up for not only for economic development, but also for some housing that is needed in, in our community. So we're in the process of that negotiation to finalize that, uh, that deal. So the city will remain owners of the actual runways and, and the actual airport itself and the operation while these uh, investors are looking in the property around that. So that's another exciting thing. The council just last night approved a, uh, a loan from uh, WIFA, and that's, uh, I forget what the acronym stands for, but they, they loan money to, primarily for, for projects in rural uh, uh, Arizona and throughout the country. And near the border. So and near the border. So rural areas near the border for uh, water and wastewater infrastructure. So this is for specifically for a new well, uh, what we call well number 18. And it's a $2.1 million loan, of which about $650,000 of it is forgivable, the principal. So we're getting a good deal. It'll end up costing us around the one4 million dollars and that will be paid out of the revenue from our existing uh, water uh, fees to do that so that's that's exciting that that'll be coming on we've instructed staff as mayor and council to be proactive and they have been as far as water to make sure that we we don't have any crisis uh, we don't anticipate any but we want to be ahead of everything to do that which uh, brings me to the new commercial port of entry, because that will also take, you know, a, a new well out in that area to be able to handle that. We've put together estimates of what that may cost and potential funding for that. And we're pleased to announce that uh, the governor's office has come through with $8.9 million to bridge the gap of what we, couldn't, uh, we're worried about, so for lack of a better term, of the $27 million that we anticipate to put water, sewer, electrical, and gas out to the new commercial port of entry. This, I can't tell you, will stimulate economic growth beyond uh, some of our imaginations. We want to do it right, and we want to plan right, and we want to make sure that it happens to the benefit of, of Douglas and our surrounding areas. We figured it to be a $27 million project to get that infrastructure out there. And again, $8.9 million is going to come from the state. And that is a big relief and a big plus for, for this project. Again, it, it won't burden the community at all. It's money that's sitting in surplus up at the state level. And so we're, we're able to take advantage of that through our relationships that we've developed. It's a kind of interesting story. We're sitting in a, in a meeting and, uh, and it gets brought up that, well, the governor has some discretionary funds and uh, you guys should ask for it. We said, where do we ask? <laughs> We'd love to. So staff put together quickly a uh, petition to, to ask for that. And we went back and forth on a couple of revisions and, and now it's a reality. And mm -hmm. it's those relationships that prove to be beneficial positive relationships that, that we've been able to develop with, with the county, with the state, and with our federal partners also. Currently, the project out there is in, in a uh, environmental review process right now. We finalized uh, the uh, donation of the 80 acres to the federal government so that they can build this facility out there. At the same time, Arizona Department of Transportation is also doing a study on where the connector road out to Highway 80 would be best suited 
for that so that we can get that on their five uh, five year plan also so these positive relationships are proving to be very fruitful for the city of Douglas and again at you know the cost to our community is is being minimized because of these relationships and we're able to to secure this outside funding so all total we expect fast approaching upwards to $500 million will probably be spent between now and when this new commercial port of entry and the, the remodeling and modernization of the existing Raul H. Castro port of entry takes place. And so we're excited about that, not only that stimulation, but we're also getting many economic development inquiries uh, as to what's going on in town and people positioning themselves so that, that we can have a successful project overall. So it'll end up being what we're terming the Douglas Commercial Corridor. And we honestly believe that, that we will be able to blossom. This will be the most state-of-the-art uh, commercial uh, entry point in the whole United States for land. And uh, we're, we're excited to, to see that happen and we're excited to see the growth that will take place from that. Many people have asked what's going on on the Mexico side. They're also in the process of the landowner directly across from where this new port of entry will be, uh, receiving the donation of the property uh, there. They're excited about that. They do have funds that have now been allocated to be able to build their portion of their port of entry. One of the things that's exciting on our side, we will have uh, facilities to have joint inspection. So rather than a commercial truck having to go through two inspections, one in Mexico, one in the United States, we'll be able to do it in one spot with inspectors from the United States, inspectors from Mexico, and we'll be able to get it done at one time, which again will make it, will facilitate being able to to uh, get uh, commercial traffic through here as uh, we anticipate lots of growth. <laughs> I was gonna use the word oodles, but I'm not sure whether our younger population understands the word oodles, but it's a whole, a whole heap uh, of that. Also, you may be seeing in, in social media that the, the, the consulate offices both in the United States and in Mexico are celebrating the bicentennial of the establishment of diplomatic relations between the United States and Mexico. So there's events that are happening there and down at our local uh, consulate off Mexican consulate office here. We will be having a visit from the U.S. consulate for our border who's stationed in Nogales. We'll be here tomorrow. Uh, I shouldn't say tomorrow because this will be out tomorrow. It'll be out on Friday to be able to uh, have a ceremony also at the border to show our the, the nature of our relationship that we have built over the year to do that. And last but not least, I'd like to thank the citizens of Douglas for all their support. I know uh, this has been a lengthy process to get things started, but we're there. And so things will start picking up momentum very quickly now. And so we hope to have these critical pieces in place so that we can have a, a nice orderly growth to our community. I tell people, you know, we don't, we don't want to be, you know, Sierra Vista. Someday we'll get there. But we want to do it in an orderly manner so that we can get there and we can make sure that it has the Douglas values that we constantly talk about and constantly put out there that we want Douglas values to be able to translate out there. Values of hardworking uh, people, family, and God-fearing, and people that have respect and love for each other. And so with all that in place, we're going to make this happen. So it's exciting. It's a great time, you know, as we reflect back on Thanksgiving to be thankful for the things that we've been able to come up with. And to celebrate the future, this upcoming year is going to be a critical year for, for all of us. So, again, Merry Christmas, and, and uh, we're excited.
Thank you so much, Mayor. You know, I think it was very important to have you here as our special guest, as you could hear um, just from our mayor. We're, we're just so thankful as an organization to have the vision of our mayor and our city council to move us forward um, in so many major areas. So, you know, I can't say enough about the partnerships, especially with the port of entry projects, as the mayor mentioned. Uh, the partnerships have been amazing. We have uh, the governor's office, as he said, came through to finish that gap that we were still kind of uh, wrestling around how we were going to uh, complete what we're calling our preliminary infrastructure to get out to the port of entry site uh, so that construction can begin. So that was about a $27 million amount. And we have partnerships and uh, grant applications. We, we're working with NADBank, we're working with Cochise County, we're working uh, with congressional leaders who have been very supportive also of, of you know, many of these have um, identified earmarks to help uh, produce this, um, this, you know, successful project and help us uh, with the development uh, for our future as a result of uh, the two-port solution, which we're calling. So thank you again, Mayor. Um, uh, Anna, one, one more yes. thing is, uh, one of the exciting things about this is that we'll now be close enough to Cochise College so that Cochise College can come and participate in our water system and our sewer system. So in speaking with President uh, Rottweiler out there, yes. he's very excited to make that happen. And by, uh, by the way, he's very committed to making sure the Douglas campus stays viable. <laughs> and this is one of the things that will help that. So it will not only do the port of entry, but it will also it, shortly after it's installed, hopefully be able to tie in Cochise College to, to that system also so it will benefit uh, the college. Yes, so uh, very important as we move out west with our infrastructure, uh, part of the design is to reach um, water all the way to Cochise College. And, you know, when you look at uh, some of our engineering studies, it, it's just amazing to see we have 40,000 feet of um, of pipe, you know, ready to be constructed out west. So I know there are many in town saying, you know, we haven't heard anything about the port of entry project. Is that still a thing? Is it happening? Absolutely, it's happening. You know, for a year now, we have been meeting every three weeks with uh, stakeholders, primarily engineers, uh, utility providers, and our uh, Cochise County partners and GSA partners. And this thing's moving along. We have so much support. We also have um, consultants that keep us briefed on what's happening on the Mexico side to make sure that you know we're we're moving in an, in alignment uh, into this future project. So um, very exciting times. I think as we end the year, we wanted to make sure we had this first um, <clears throat> combination talk of the town and podcast to share with you the great things that we've done during this year. So with that, you know, I think Jason's going to kind of guide um, some, do a, a few more deeper dives and ask us questions about some of the policy priorities that mayor and council have been focused on this year. Um, and we do have six areas that we focus on. And um, Jason, I, you know, you can kind well, of guide that with, <clears throat> with your talk of the town uh Talking about the Cochise College infrastructure or, or connecting the infrastructure to Cochise College, I understand Cox Cable was awarded an upgrade grant for the City of Douglas Service Area for the community and Cochise College. Yes, yes. So that's a huge piece of the infrastructure. Mm -hmm. uh, not only water and uh, wastewater, but we're creating also uh, the provision of conduit into the project to provide uh, broadband. So uh, just before uh, we were, um, I think it just came after the award of the two-port solution, Cox started applying for a huge um, grant opportunity to bring fiber to home and fiber to business uh, to our Douglas community. And it was months later, I think it was closer to um, September, October, that they were uh, received notice that they were awarded $8.9 million, and they're putting a portion in addition to that into the project to make sure that we secure that availability. So part of that is primarily within our community to connect and bridge our digital divide within the community. 
Um, but we are also working with a potential provision of them taking, uh, you know, part of that or filling up space in some of the um, the conduit that will be leading into the new area out west. So we're very excited about there about that and very thankful for the partnership that COGS brings to our community. Yeah, so again, another upwards of the $10 million that will be coming in the community to be able to make sure our broadband is up to base and that fiber out into the homes is going to be very important. You know, we learned a great lesson during uh, the pandemic. Uh, you know, the school district expressed to us that sometimes they, they struggled with students being able to have sufficient broadband in their homes be able to keep up with the lessons and so this is is a godsend to be able to to help our community so again money that's not going to cost our our individual community members anything and a, a great benefit let's talk about the revitalization of downtown streetscape project downtown speakers are operational um, speakers downtown Yes, we have uh, part of the streetscape project incorporates many things, but one of the kind of low hanging fruit, if you will, are, um, you know, benches, lights around our trees and uh, speaker systems to be able to play music during the holidays, things like that. So we've we've been able to do a few of the smaller things, but bigger things are uh, underway. We have uh, started putting some funds aside to um, help uh, with the repaving of G Avenue, at least in the, the central area of our downtown. Uh, we, we want to be able to upgrade our infrastructure there as well and, and just be able to make it um, more inviting and welcoming for our tourists that we'd like to you know um, attract to our beautiful downtown area and also revitalize the businesses through a different program, not through the streetscape program, but revitalize some of the, the buildings by uh, coming up with some programs that help them revitalize the historic nature of some of our downtown. So we have a few programs coming up. Our website always will have the um, updated information. We're working on some new things to provide project updates on the website on an ongoing basis. And we hope to that, have that ready in January as well. So uh, Streetscape, very important. It has um seemed i think there's an uh, a feeling that it, it's just delayed only because of the funding that's another huge huge piece uh, but we have uh, about a third of the funding uh, of what we need to do that and we're uh, beating the bushes out there to try and and gain more of those uh, opportunities for ourselves on uh, the golf course assessment you had an inventory or uh Study there? Yes, yes. So the golf course, that's another area that we recently looked at. So we're, we're taking the approach as mayor and council have directed, you know, leave no stone unturned because we have so many amenities in the community that um, need attention. So earlier in the year, we had a, a vendor, a consultant come down and take a look and assess our golf course. And they produced for us a document that's very, very thorough and we're starting to follow and we're also again uh, it's, a, it's about the funding putting together a strategy and we think we do have a strategy to uh, fund some solutions at the golf course in the uh, next couple of years and with that comes um, you know some of the irrigation and landscaping and uh, solutions from all perspectives and and the, uh, the study uh, gets down to um, to the detail of how we maintain our greens in certain areas, our fairways versus you know the um, the main parts of of our um, front nine, back nine, connecting the irrigation system. So we have lots um, to do, but we have a great resource now and a great plan. Uh, the plan also will help us uh, in case we are in need of additional funds should some of our uh, plans right now fall through, then it, it kind of sets the way for additional funding requests, which there are so many opportunities right now uh, for different grants and such. So we'll keep you updated on that as well. The, if, if I may interject, we, we, we'd also like to thank the existing uh, governing board out there at the golf course. They, they've done a fantastic job 
with the limited yeah. resources that, that, that they have. And, and so again, we, it's an asset to the community. And so that's why we commissioned, these people were kind enough to come help us with this study to be able to figure out what's the best way to, to accomplish this. And we put it on the table and we, we see whether or not we wanna go forward with that. You know, if the cost is too prohibited or if it's within means, then we wanna do that. But it's an asset to the community and we'd hate to lose it. Which brings us to economic development with all this new excitement. How is this going to help our economy? So I think that's an overall approach, Mayor. I, I don't know if you'd like to add something there, but we, we have a strategy of, you know, kind of um, build it and they would come, will come, right? We're, we're trying to annex out west. We have different um, strategies for annexing in other areas, but with broadband, with new infrastructure, with uh, improved downtown, all of that kind of sets the tone for new investors to feel more comfortable coming in, primarily because of great infrastructure. I think if we have solid broadband capabilities, um, it's easier to attract you know, businesses. But you know that's longer term. We have several things underway for short term interest. The mayor mentioned about what we're doing, trying to attract a grocer. Uh, we have inquiries, as the mayor mentioned, from many um, investors trying to come in and see, you know, what, what's going to fit in with this two-port solution and where do we fit in and already purchasing uh, parcels around the community for different purposes. We have the airport activity that the mayor mentioned as well that will contribute much to our economic development. So all a very positive approach. Another thing that we're doing internally is trying to make sure that uh, we have a staff shortage over there in the in the building department and such like that, which we're making every effort to fill. But we also have tasked the staff to look at how to make this more streamlined. And we can't thank the county enough for helping us bridge some of these holes that we have Absolutely. to be able to make sure inspections are done in a timely manner. But we want to make sure that every everybody knows that Douglas is open for business and we, we want people to come down and have a good experience here and be successful. And that's the key, you know, uh, anybody can open a business, but we want you to be successful. And so we want to have pieces in place, the infrastructure internally and how we look at things and be able to uh, come to a, a good solution to be able to make things happen. Not cut corners, but make sure that everything it falls within, you know, the legal parameters that we have set up in our municipal code and our zoning code to make sure that, but we can find a way to be able to get there and make sure that people have this opportunity Absolutely. to be able to invest in Douglas. Okay, uh, community facilities and special events, the parks master plan. Yeah, so under that pol um, policy priority area, that is underway currently. So we um, went out um, to contract somebody to come in and, and do a plan or a study, conduct a study for our parks grounds. And a parks master plan will help inform mayor and council on decisions they need to make as we grow as a community, um, where we need either an increased amount of parks uh, where we can use, maybe what we can do with our facilities. For example, our 8th Street pool has had some challenges. It is, a, it is an older pool with some infrastructure challenges. So this will incorporate some of that. It'll also incorporate the use and conduct many community surveys on the use of our many fields. And um, they base our demographic and current population on our acreage of park land that we have or available parks. And they also look at things like trails and walkways and will come up with some strategies for us to um, use short term for our current need. Because I know many of you realize we have such a wonderful um, year round program of sports for our youth and our community. We have soccer, we have baseball, you know, it just depends on the season. You go out to the parks and they're just uh, full of activity. And sometimes uh, these leagues don't have enough um, space to either 
have their uh, ongoing season in terms of games or even the practice fields. We always end up short in our practice areas. So even the current state is being examined on where we can use maybe more space, where we can expand. And a dog park is certainly part of that conversation as well. And that's been a big topic of discussion. So we're, we're looking forward to some of those results. Wonderful. I think that's all we have. Yeah, so any, um, I think that kind of ties up all of our major projects. We will be coming back after every mayor and council meeting uh, with maybe a few topics to give some updates and, and um, provide to you mayor and council actions from recent meetings. That's the plan. Uh, before we wrap up, I just want to make a few announcements um, because we are at the year end and Christmas season and holidays among us. So I want to make sure that you all know this Friday, um, tomorrow from five to seven, uh, the library is hosting a Christmas party, take your picture with Santa. So make sure we get those children out to the library. They always have some great programs. And on Saturday, December 17th, beginning at 10 and going through one o'clock at Castro Park, Raul Castro Park, uh, we have Whoville Holiday and Toys for Tots as our community event. So bring your children out there. Um, we have a very, very special guest flying into that event. So you absolutely want to get your children out there, come out for games, for free hot dogs and more. And um, my last note for, for this um, session is keep an eye out for positions that are open at the City of Douglas. Uh, go to our website, come visit our Human Resources Department downstairs at City Hall. Currently, we have full-time positions available of, in dispatcher. We have dispatcher positions. I think we have three. We have police officer positions, firefighter EMT, building specialist, equipment operator, wastewater operator, deputy public works director, parks maintenance worker, and transit driver. So um, just want to keep you informed, and I hope um, you all have a wonderful um, end of year uh, celebrating the holidays. Merry Christmas to everybody and God bless. Thank you. Thank you very much, May, uh, Mayor uh, Hewish and uh, uh, City Manager Ms. Ann Kehoe. And Thank I'm you, Jason Bacon, KDAP. Thank you. Thank you, Jason. Merry Christmas. Merry Thank Christmas, you. Everyone. Merry Christmas.